Chances are, if you clicked on this video, you have just received an offer to study medicine at the University of Nottingham. You probably have a lot of questions about what the course is like, how you should prepare before you start medical school, and what being a student is like at Nottingham. What's the nightlife like? what things are available to do in campus. My name is Aymara and I'm a second year medical student at the University of Nottingham and today I'm going to be answering all your questions about studying medicine and being a student at the University of Nottingham. So before we get started make sure to like, subscribe, turn on the post notifications for way more amazing medical school content. The first set of questions I'm going to be answering are all about settling in to medical school. The first question is, what tips do you have on surviving first year at the University of Nottingham Medical School? My first tip is to only learn lecture content. This is because there is so much to learn at medical school. Don't kid yourself and think I'm going to read a little bit beyond the subject or I'm going to open up a textbook and write notes on the whole chapter. Seriously, you only need to learn what is on your lecture notes and if you don't understand the lecture content, then simply use osmosis, use your seniors, use other online resources to supplement those notes. Because your aim right now isn't to become an amazing doctor, it's simply to pass this stage so that you can eventually become a doctor. My second biggest tip is to use active recall and space repetition. Now, I definitely recommend this for second and third term of first year going forwards. Um, first term, honestly, I, don't, I shouldn't say this, but it is useless. It's just like, this is DNA, this is a gene. You will never need to know that again, it's just pointless biochemistry, but from second and third year, it does start to get way more like content heavy and clinical related. Um, and for those terms, I suggest that at the end of every week, or every lecture, you create even five summary questions. So create five questions that you can then go on and test yourself at the end of the year with. And with your anatomy, I suggest that you do the same. As you learn each topic, so as you learn the upper arm and stuff like that, I suggest that you create online flashcards, so Anki, so that at the end of the year, you do not have to create a mountain of resources, which honestly you won't be able to do because at the end of the year, you should actually be focusing on practicing those questions. And what's really good is that that means at the end of the year, you'll have all these question banks that you can practice in your revision because unlike A-levels, you're not given passover questions. So yeah, definitely create your own active recall questions, both for anatomy using online flashcards and for the rest of the course, simply typing in five questions at the end of your lecture that you can do at the end of the year. This is something that I wish I'd done. Um, I've started doing it this year, but that means I have a whole bunch of first year content that I just do not know. The second question is, do many students find time to have a reasonable work to life balance? Now I'm in my preclinical phase, so this means I haven't started my clinical phase which starts in third year, um, but I definitely would say that it is completely possible. The thing with medicine is that it's so easy to let it take over your life, but the most important skill that you need to learn, which is actually such a hard thing to do, is to make time for everything. So there are enough hours in the day and like we do get several half days in the week, but it's not, it's about doing your lectures in the time you're allocated to do them, not just letting them take the whole day so that you have time to go to the gym, you have time to hang out with friends and sesh with friends once a week. So yes, you can have a work-life balance, but you definitely need to work for it because it is so difficult to keep up when you feel like you have a never-ending to-do list. The next question is, is it difficult to make friends? It's definitely easy to make friends because as a medical student, you have 15 to 20 lectures a week, which usually outside of COVID, you'd be doing in person along with workshops. And the MedSoc community is so strong, as in there are loads of um, medical society balls, there are loads of societies that you can get involved in. So you will see people in your year regularly and get to make friends with them. Me, my social anxiety took over. And also I found it so difficult to go into lectures because I found that they went way too fast for me. I couldn't keep up with the content, so I didn't go to lectures. I'd only go into workshops and I'd do my lectures from home. But I think it's definitely easier than a lot of other courses to make friends because you're in so often. The next question is, is it worth preparing by revising A-level content and getting ahead of the medicine content before starting university? No, 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 no. If you can take one thing away from this video, it is one, yes, a bit of your A-level content will come up, don't revise this before you go to uni. It's such a small amount and actually anything that medicine draws from, from A-level content, they'll recap with you. Secondly, don't get ahead with the medicine content. There is so much, I'm talking about like 200 lectures in the first year that 
you can't get ahead of it and you need to have a teacher teaching you the information so there's no way you can get ahead of it 100% what you need to do is enjoy and do the most year 13 summer so that you can start medical school refreshed and ready to give it your all not like you've just finished a levels which is such a stressful time you spend the whole of the summer revising and then you burn out within freshers week of uni because you've already done too much work yeah rest any information you need to know any recapping will come at medical school um someone said how have you found the jump from a levels to degree now i love answering this question because people are so shocked by what i have to say medicine the actual content of medicine is as easy as a levels how difficult medical school content is it's not any more difficult like it's not like you're doing really complex equations none of that however what is so hard and what makes people burn out and so overwhelmed is the amount of content for example let's say you're studying trigonometry at a level you will do this for about two weeks right you'll have the introductory lesson get some homework get the feedback, then have a slightly hard lesson, get slightly harder homework, then at the end you'll have a topic test. At medical school, it's one lecture per topic. We had one lecture on the whole of ultrafiltration and you don't have like homework, you don't have times that you like go back to the lecture. So it's like keeping up on top of all those lectures and making sure that you understand the general concepts is what's really tricky and takes time to master. So content wise, it's not harder. Amount of content wise, definitely harder and that's where the real jump is but don't get scared guys remember there are thousands of people across the country in your year year above year above you know generations upwards that have coped and have become successful doctors you will be able to cope too because you're not the worst in that list so don't worry guys and now i'm going to move on to the set of questions that you guys asked me about the course itself could you explain what a typical first and second year timetable looks like of course so i'm going to take out um what was last week's timetable and talk through it so monday as you can see i have three lectures tuesday i have two lectures one of them is two hours though wednesday i have a seminar thursday i have two lectures friday i have a workshop all morning and then a two-hour lecture in the evening so as you can see, it's not that much. However, as I told you, what is a two hour lecture covers so much content. So for me, a two hour lecture takes like six hours to cover because I have to make all my notes on it so that they're coherent, concise, and then revision notes from that. So your timetable, definitely more freer than your A-level timetable. It's not nine to five, but you will end up need, needing to work a lot to be able to feel comfortable with the content. How early on do you get clinical experience? So Nottingham isn't like a traditional course like Oxbridge, Imperial, UCL. You do get clinical experience from day one, but obviously this isn't doesn't mean you're, you're on the wards from day one. So in first year we had, well we were meant to have without COVID, uh, three GP placements and three hospital placements. And within that it's one day where you sit in with the GP, see them do all the consultations, They'll ask you questions um, saying, what did you think about that, for example? What do you know about asthma if you just had an asthma patient? The hospital placements, they're quite interesting because, for example, we learned how to do a respiratory examination and then we got to do it on a patient in the hospital. But proper clinical placements, like where you're in nine to five every day of the week and scrubs on the wards, shadowing doctors, that comes in the second half of third year. The next question is, can you intercalate at Nottingham? In fact, intercalation is compulsory and it comes in the form of a BMED side project. Now, what's good about intercalation at Nottingham is that you don't have to take a year out. So you intercalate, but the course is only five years. Obviously this means it's quite stressful. You have to do it in a short period of time in third year. So yeah, you have to intercalate essentially. The next question follows on from that and it's how does the BMED side project work? So what you do is that you apply to a home base. I'm pretty sure this is like kind of what we're doing right now. And I'm not sure, but it'll be something like neurology or something like that. And then once you get your home base, you get like a project to work on. At the end, you write a dissertation and you submit it by the January of third year. Um, and you do a presentation on it and then you start clinical placement two months later. The next question is, how have you found the quality of lectures during lockdown? Is it more difficult to learn the content? I way prefer it because one, you can ask way more questions because it's online. All you have to do is type it in. You don't have to put your hand up in the middle of like 500 people in a lecture hall. Um, 
Two, we still have in-person sessions for anatomy, so you still have anatomy workshops you can go into. So yeah, I don't actually find it any worse, and if anything, I like it more because you can do it from the comfort of your own home, although I wish libraries were open, you know, as and when you want. The next question is, is it case-based learning? Yes, yeah, so after you get rid of that horrible first time in first year, um, that following terms in first and second year are all case-based. So you have a case each week that you get questions on and you have a plenary at the end of the week. A doctor reviews all the questions you're asked in the case. You can ask him anything. He's a specialist in that area. And then you have lectures that accompany that case. For example, we had um, a case on Parkinson's. So all the lectures were about the structure and function of the basal ganglia, which is a region of the brain that controls like the fine tuning of movement. Um, you know, anatomy on the brain, the physiology of the brain, drugs used to treat Parkinson's. So yeah, it's like everything you learn kind of complements that case. The next question is, are there many GP placements in first year medicine? Not many, as I said, but I didn't necessarily feel like I missed out. There are three GP placements that last a whole day and you do get to see a fair few set of patients there. Obviously you don't have any autonomy to do any anything, but it's really interesting to be able to get a touch of how a doctor applies all the knowledge you're learning about at the moment to clinical practice. Do you suffer from imposter syndrome? Um, <laughs> massively. It's so difficult when, for example, I turn up to anatomy workshop and there's someone there that knows all the anatomy and they're saying words that I've never even heard of and I just feel like oh my god I'm so much dumber than everyone here I feel like I'm not like I'm never gonna be on top of my work you know I feel like I'm failing and I think it's important to realize that everyone is on different journeys everyone has different strengths and everyone feels this way for example I don't revise during the year I create my original resources throughout the year and then I revise at the end. So of course I'm not going to know all about anatomy right now. Right now we're just focusing on making Anki flashcards. That person has, has instead chosen to spend their time revising on everything they need to know for that session. And that's fine. Secondly, um, my strength isn't anatomy. My strength is pharmacology. So where I get all the drug calculations correct, they might not. Thirdly, everyone feels like this. With medicine, and I think this is something that you guys need to understand, there is a never-ending to-do list. You could always be more on top of lectures. You could always have more revision resources completed. Heck, you could be f doing your revision resources as you go on through the year. And I'm still here, I'm still afloat, I haven't gone under, so why am I gonna give myself the anxiety of thinking that I don't belong here? That's my biggest tip. Don't worry about the never ending to-do list. The next question I've been asked is, is the workload a big step up from A-level? As I mentioned before, yes, it is. The next set of questions you guys asked me was all about accommodation. The first question is, how do I choose accommodation? Now, the first thing I suggest is you think about whether you want to be self-catered and catered. The main differences that I found were that self-catered, you get much more autonomy about what you want to eat. It's much funner to have house flat parties in self-catered accommodation. Um, you don't need to have to get up at certain times for meal times. Benefit to catered is that I actually find that kind of you become closer with the people there because you're all going to lunch together, you know, you all have the same meal times. Also, I suggest you think about where you want to be. So the catered halls in Nottingham are on campus, whereas the self-catered halls are off campus. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. So just, I'd say, like, think about what's important to you, look at the list on the University of Nottingham website and then go through a process of elimination. Oh, and one thing to add, they're all kind of the same distance from the medical school. Obviously you can look at this in more detail, but I'd suggest that you think about the environment you want to be in, not the distance to the medical school, because honestly, an extra 10 minutes isn't really gonna make a difference. Did you stay in catered or self-catered? So I stayed in self-catered halls in Raleigh Park. Actually, University of Nottingham wasn't my first choice. I know, I know. Um, and so I just immediately got put into Raleigh Park. I did not like Rally Park. The only thing that was good about it was that it was cheap and it was right next to a little. If this isn't an issue for you, then it doesn't have a lot of medical students in it. It's really out the way from campus. I'd say it's like one of the furthest um, accommodations from campus um, and it looks really dingy. <laughs> My next question is, what accommodation would you recommend for medical students? 
I definitely recommend ones which are on campus and are catered. I kind of wish I'd done this because I'd feel like I'd know more medical students. A lot of medics were at Broadcape Park, Crips, also Newark, which are all on campus while well, Newark's on Jubilee campus. And I feel like there's just a strong medic community there, so you get to make a lot of medical friends. But this is a bit of a bummer if you do want to be in South Catered. The nicest South Catered one that I know of is St. Peter's Court. It looks really nice, it's right next to the Lidl, but then again, it is quite out of the way. And it will take around a 25 minute walk to the medical school. But then again, so do the ones on campus because you have to trek through campus. The next question is is second year accommodation difficult to organize yes and no it's difficult to organize in terms of who you're gonna live with you'll rush into that decision so early that it's hard because the friendships you make early on in first year don't tend to be the friendships you have later on but in terms of organizing it not at all if you just look up like student houses in nottingham go through like a trusted landlord like you need to rent um it will all get sorted out for you so the first question what's the nightlife like I love the nightlife. Now I came from London where the clubs are super exclusive. Like you have to go in a suit, you have to go in high heels. If you don't look right, they don't let you in. They're so expensive. Here, that's not the case. They're all student friendly. There's something for everyone. Um, Ink is really good if you like grime, hip hop, rock city, if you like like cheesy music, like you want a sesh to like party in the USA. Um, stealth, if you like DMB and stuff like that um prism if you like basic like chart music um there's like a club for everyone rock city it's free before like 10 p.m and you get like a free drink fridays and saturdays other clubs like ink you ha and prism you have to pay like six quid so yeah there's something for everyone it's made for the university of nottingham students so i'd say yeah 10 out of 10 i love it the next question is what are the best biggest societies so at the university of nottingham medical school scrubs is i think by far the biggest it is so good and i recommend that each and every one of you join it it's a surgical society now me i'm not interested in surgery but i still really recommend it because they create concise anatomy resources for medical students made by third fourth and fifth years i find this so much more helpful than the recommended anatomy textbooks they give you which have so much convolutedly explained um information I recommend it much more than their lectures. And so, yes, definitely join Scrubs to take a look at their anatomy resources and their anatomy revision sessions. Make revision notes from that because that way you know that that's exactly what you need to know for the exam because these are fourth years, fifth years. They know what's on the exams. They know what they like to ask. So I definitely recommend this. Aside from that, um, they are, have loads of societies for sports, um, for medics. They have ones for specific specialties you're interested in which I'd really suggest because honestly if you're doing preclinical medicine it can get pretty sad you can think I'm just doing lecture after lecture on like cells like this isn't what I signed up to do I want to be a doctor so by signing up to specific specialty societies you like get a feel for what you're working towards and it can be really motivating the next question is how much on average do people spend a week excluding rent um it really depends from person to person for example um how much you're spending on groceries i usually spend about 50 quid on groceries which is quite a lot but this girl loves to eat um it depends on like how much alcohol you're buying which does build up if you're going clubbing and if you're paying to go clubbing ubers to go to the club and back take out course materials d don't actually add up to much um so i'd say like i'd say like 70 to 100 pounds but it differs from person to person the next question is um are there lots of restrictions of what you can and can't do as a medical student such as posting online 100 percent. now this is the thing you have to remember that you are going into one of the most respected professions in existence just imagine if you in year seven you went online to stalk your teacher and there were loads of photos of her like drunk on the street you would tell it the class like oh my god look at these photos isn't that like crazy and that's exactly the way you need to think about it however at the same time you know i get drunk i don't know a single medical student who doesn't get obscenely drunk but it's all about not letting your public image and reputation be tainted by the things you choose to do in your private time if that makes sense so but essentially don't get caught and at the same time, don't do obscene things which are just unethical. For example, anything to do with patient confidentiality, don't even try it. You will get struck off that register immediately. Stories of patients and give their full name because you don't know who's around you. You don't know who's going to report you. Um, 
And this isn't to scam on you. All I'm saying is be careful and don't do anything stupid. The next question is, how was Fresh's week? A blur, to put it bluntly. Um, yeah, it was great. All the like, there's no real lectures during Fresh's week. It's all like, this is how to use IT. Welcome to the course. And honestly, I just say focus on going to as many fresh events as you can. Focus on making friends. The next question is um, best places to get food. By far my favorite question. This girl loves to eat. I love food. I know exactly where to get the best food. Revolución de Cuba. This is a restaurant that I discovered way too late. It was the week before lockdown started amazing food they have like burgers chicken wings they have like these chicken wings with rum mayonnaise amazing best cocktails they have wagamamas which is really nice oh there's this really really nice like indian tapas place which is so cute it's called mowgli really recommend that as well oh turtle bay definitely recommend again it's like jamaican food so they have like plantain burgers chicken wings and stuff like that really good really nice cocktails as well tamatanga amazing indian food as well the next set of questions are all about equipment that you should bring to medical school. The first question is, what stethoscope should I get? So definitely you need to get the brand Lippmann. Just get the Lippmann Classic. Someone says, do you recommend buying any textbooks? No, honestly, don't use textbooks. They're so outdated. They have way too much information. And if you ever need a textbook, the library has tons. Not many people in the year are borrowing them. And there are like six libraries and they all have the textbooks that you might need. Um, the only one that we are told to buy is the Moore and Agore Clinical Anatomy textbook, which honestly, no tea, no shade, use the anatomy resources from Scrubs if you're going to Knott's. Yeah, that's the only textbook that they'll tell you you need to buy. The next question is, should I get a laptop? Definitely, I would not suggest that you rely on an iPad because you will have to write essays i know in first year like first time you have to write like mini 500 word essays you will have to do a lot of typing but i guess i'm biased because i'm a laptop user and i've never used an ipad and someone said what do i need before i go in terms of equipment so a stethoscope yes you, you should get one but if you're on a budget and you can't don't worry they will have stethoscopes for you to borrow um and honestly you don't use them that often i've used mine probably about twice the time i've been at medical school so far i suggest that you definitely get a planner so that you can add any important dates that you need any important deadlines um and the more you plan your day the more you're not wasting each hour now this doesn't mean be productive each hour of the day but you should schedule in self-care so you make sure you do it and that is it for today guys i hope that you found this video very helpful i tried to give you the best advice that i've learned in my two years at medical school in the most concise way i could i hope you enjoyed the video and if you have any other questions dm me comment down below i'll try my best to get through the questions and if you did like it make sure to like subscribe turn on post notifications i post a lot of medical school content and lifestyle content i will be your undergraduate medicine go to if you need me to be um and in the meantime good luck with a levels and i can't wait to hopefully see you around campus